Hey everyone, it is Radley here with the Angel Tarot Show, uh, exclusively as a podcast on mindbodyspirit.fm. So I'm really excited to be here with you today because we are about to embark on a journey. And it's a journey that's going to take us a little bit of time uh, because we are going on an adventure with the archangels. And that's going to take up quite a few weeks of our time going forward. Now, I'm really excited about that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that talking about angels is definitely one of the things that I do best. And it's a, it's a big, big passion of mine. And so it really gives me a lot of joy to get to talk about something like that. Um, I feel like for me that that's a very much a free flowing kind of conversation and I enjoy that experience. Uh, another reason that I really like it is that for those of you listening on mindbodyspirit.fm, uh, a lot of you are kind of new to angels. And so there is no one that I enjoy more teaching um, about the angels and the archangels than people who are new to the subject. So before we get started on a, a, a quick little summary that we're going to do today that we're calling the Hall of the Archangels. And we're going to go through all 15 of the primary archangels. Um, um, that um, I generally work with. Now, um, but before we do that, I, I want to sort of step back and give you a little bit of like an overview of, of archangels and angels in general. Um, first of all, angels and archangels um, uh, are messengers from God. They were created to be a, su a support system, if you will, for those of us who are going through an earthly experience. Um, and, and so there's guardian angels that are here to be very exclusive and very specific to working with you individually. And we will talk about guardian angels in more depth at, at a later date. Um, archangels are more global in their viewpoint. They exist to help people um, from the standpoint of citizens of planet Earth. Um, but because archangels and angels in general are omnipresent, that's O-M-N-I-P-R-E-S-E-N-T, omnipresent, that means that they are able to be um, oh, what is that new movie that just got all the awards? Everywhere, every everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> that could be the title of a movie on archangels. They can be everywhere, everything, all at once. Uh, so they can be helping out you at the same time that they are helping out Michelle Yeoh <laughs> from the movie. At the same time that they're helping out your second cousin on your mother's side, twice removed. Uh, they can be they can help out as many people as necessary all at the same time. Now, if that seems impossible, then you can't think about angels or archangels from the standpoint of a human experience. We as human experiences are um, restricted by time and space and um, archangels and angels are not. They are beings of source of the divine of the universe. And so these things do not restrict them. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. Um, they are meant, they are, they are hardwired to help us. So you never have to worry about calling on Archangel Michael when in your human egoistic form, you might think um, from a standpoint of kindness that, oh, I shouldn't call on Michael because Michael's got too much to do. That's impossible. It is impossible for Michael to have too much to do. Human beings can have too much to do, but Archangel Michael cannot have too much to do, as nor can any other archangel, um, because they things don't work that way for them. So um, another thing that you kind of have to keep in mind is that um, angels and archangels um, um, do not actually technically have a gender. 
So um, we think about archangels as having genders because we as human beings like gender, I guess. I mean, it's like we want to look at Michael and go, well, he's safety, he's protection, he has a sword, that all seems sort of masculine. So he's masculine, he's got a male name. And Jophiel is the archangel of beauty and and all of this lovely stuff. And she comes in roses and fuchsia pink, and that seems sort of feminine. And so, well, she's a girl. So, but in truth and in reality, the archangels don't actually have a gender. Likewise, they don't have a set appearance. So there's a lot of talk about Michael, and he has a Caucasian uh, skin, and he has long blonde hair and blue eyes, and he's muscular and buff and all of these kinds of things. And um, because that um, image of Michael has been proliferated across the airways for so long, I think it gets ingrained in people's psyches that that's what Michael looks like. And so that's what they expect. And therefore, dun dun dun, that's what they get. Um, archangels and guardian angels both present themselves to us in the way in which we can most embrace them, in a way in which we can feel like, oh, this is a connection I feel strong about. Um, but they, they're metamorphs, if you will. They can be in any appearance, any gender, any look um, that we can imagine. So if Michael and his blonde and blue hunkiness is what resonates to you, then that's great. Um, but if you don't have Caucasian skin or you have a different viewpoint of Archangel Michael, then he will show up that way for you. Um, I personally don't see Archangel Michael that way. I see Michael, Archangel Michael as being having dark hair, but the blue eyes, uh, very handsome, uh, but sort of like Clark Kent. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't want to talk too much about Michael until we get to Michael. He's just a good example because so many people are familiar with Michael. So um, what, what is the takeaway here? The takeaway is to not put angels and archangels in a box um, any more than you would put the divine or source or God or goddess in a box. We have to look at them outside the viewpoint of a human experience and um, allow them to have the ability and the power to present themselves in a way in which um, is personal. Yeah, is personal to each of us. So um, that's kind of like my caveat. I may think of others as we go along. That's groovy cool. But let's start thinking about the 15 archangels that I work with on a regular basis. Um, there, some people think there are less, other people think there are more. This is just the system of belief that I was taught as I was growing up in the angel world. Um, and th so this is the one that I work with. Here's another caveat that has come up in my head. It's like, it doesn't matter which system you believe in or which system you work with. All that matters is that you believe in something because again, angels are outside um, out the human sphere of what is possible. And so angels just really want to have a personal relationship with us. They really want that. They want to be of assistance. They really want to help. And so it don't get too hung up on that. So um, I'm going to do these in alphabetical order. Um, and so I'm going to give you a brief summary. And then over the coming weeks, each week, we are going to be focused on a particular archangel. Now, that will not necessarily be alphabetical. That's going to be based on just what um, I feel guided uh, to do what particular archangel of the week. But for now, we're going to go alphabetically. And so that leads us right away 
to Archangel Ariel, whose name means the lioness of God, or if you see Ariel as male, the lion of God, um, but Archangel Ariel comes in a pale pink color. And so Ariel is um, known for nature um, and animals and fairies and earth and therefore earthly needs. So um, at the, let's start that from the beginning. It's like Ariel said to protect the protect nature, protect the forests, protect earth, protect the earth's animals. And see to them. Um, now that leads us to this whole concept of well, then what does Ariel look like? Well, for me, Ariel is um, um, a redhead, a ginger. She has long red hair, but she isn't dressed like a typical angel. She is in clothing that is designed for the for running through the forest, not big white flowing. Um, uh, gowns that you can envision getting stuck and caught on bushes and trees as she runs. She's dressed uh, very much, if you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, she is dressed like an, one of the elves. So she's got a green tunic and green pants. She has, she does have angel wings and a halo, um, uh, but she has like a bag on the side, on her side that is full of golden coins. Now, why would that be? Well, as the archangel of nature, um, she is the archangel also of manifesting and of ab and abundance. She's not the only archangel that is focused that can that can you can work with on that account, but it's one of the main things that people go to Ariel for. Um, and so the reason that she is considered that is because she is the uh, she is an archangel has the ability to help us take things from nature, which is where we as human beings, all our stuff comes from. I mean, let's face it, uh, metal and steel comes from the earth and wood comes from trees. And so, you know, uh, Plants are grown in the soil, and so this whole sense of, well, here's this stuff that we make other stuff out of that we might want to manifest. For example, like a car, the steel that comes out of the ground that becomes a, the body of a car. So um, that's one of the reasons why she is known for that. And those gold coins that she keeps in her bag are for the purpose of um, providing us with like these magic coins that we can, and that's sort of like make a wish on. It's a little more complicated than that. So we'll talk about that more later uh, when we do the episode on Ariel. But in essence, you can think of these gold coins as sort of like being... Um, um, coins that you can trade in for a wish. Let's say it that way. Um, so that's Ariel. Next up is Azrael. It's A-Z-R-A-E-L. His name means whom God helps. And he comes in this creamy white color. So what is Azrael all about? Well, Azrael is all about comforting people through emotional turmoil, sorrow, grief, and loss. Um, he is, he is said to be the archangel that helps people to cross over uh, from the earthly plane back into the spiritual plane. Um, because he does these things, he is the archangel of grief counseling, therefore is said to be something like a patron saint to uh, psychologists and therapists, um, especially in their work for helping people to heal from trauma, whether that's a capital T or a small T, or helping people to be able to recover from a significant loss. Um, Mazrael is thought to be a male energy. Um, uh, he, for me at least, is very pale in, in complexion, uh, has long white hair, even though he's quite young. He's very attractive, and in, in old spiritual tests, texts, he's said to be so beautiful, so amazing to look at that our hearts leap out of our chests. It doesn't matter what gender we are or what um, um, sexual um, focus we have, 
uh, that's not the right word, but it'll work for now. Um, orientation, that's the word. Um, it doesn't matter because it's not a romantic love. It's just love. And so we just fall in love with him. And that's why people are said to be willing so um, um, readily to follow him out of this life into the next. So Azrael, again, comes in this creamy white and helps people to be able to recover from challenges that have to do with emotional upheaval, um, grief, trauma, sadness, those kinds of things. Next up is Archangel Shamuel. It's C-H-A-M-U-E-L. And Shamuel's name means he who sees God um, or the eyes of God. Um, Shamuel comes in a pale green kind of color. And um, he is very often most, a lot of people really focus on Shamuel as being the archangel that helps us to find lost things or helps us to find things that we can't find. So what does that mean? Well, that mean, that's a, that's, for example, you've lost your car keys, you've misplaced your phone, you can't find your wallet, and you can't find your wedding band, you can't find that other earring that matches the one you have on the other side of your head, whatever. Um, and so Shamuel is said to be able to help us to find these things. Um, even beyond that, Shamuel is said to be able to help us to find things we're looking for. So for example, um, the, um, a romantic relationship, the right person for us, yes, in that, in that um, vein. Also said to be able to help us like find the perfect job, the perfect career. Um, so helping is not just physical things. It's also um, spiritual or etheric items that we're trying to find in our lives. Now, even more so than that, I or what rather, let me say it this way. What I think is way more important than that is that Archangel is the, um, Archangel Samuel is the angel of universal and, or global peace and personal peace. Now, I think that's a lot more important than finding your car keys. Um, but he is said to be able to help us on, on a global sense, if that's what we're praying for, or on a personal matter, um, to be able to find personal peace. Um, I, th I think that his interactions with us when it comes to global peace are very important and really matter. Um, but I would almost be willing to argue that his ability to help us to find personal peace is even more important. And the reason that I say that is because um, if everybody were able to find personal peace, we wouldn't need an archangel for global peace. Um, so that's my opinion. <clears throat> and so um, Shamuel helps us to take responsibility for our part in global peace by helping us to find our own personal peace so that we can be in a place of being able to contribute to the world in a more meaningful and powerful fashion. <clears throat> Next is Archangel Gabriel. Her name means the strength of God. She comes in the color copper. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So she comes in the color copper. Um, so let's talk about that whole she thing. Um, Gabriel is one of the very few um, archangels that are listed directly, specifically in the Bible. There are only three, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel. Um, the rest of them come from ancient texts like the Dead Sea Scrolls and um, other sort of like really ancient documents that you could argue are relatable to um, um, each of the uh, three major um, Christian, Judaic, Muslim uh, religions. Um, so really old documents. And so um, at least in Western traditions, they religions really, really like their archangels to be male, like all of them. 
Um, and I'll let you come to your own conclusions about why that might be, because um, uh, I certainly have my thoughts and they're probably the same as yours. But um, Gabriel um, is the one that's sort of like, a, there's a lot of like energy around it. Um, and if you look at Gabriel and make a determination about gender, which doesn't exist in Archangels, just reminding you. So if you do that, then when you think about Gabriel um, and you look at ancient photograph pictures, photographs, whatever, ancient paintings of Gabriel, you'll find that it's it's very, very gender neutral. It's like you can look at some and go, that seems feminine. You can look at another one and see think it seems male. It's very androgynous in these paintings. Um, and yet, if you look at what Gabriel is responsible for, um, which includes parenting and adoption, uh, because she's the archangel of the Annunciation, the archangel that is said to have come to Mary and said, hey, you're going to have a baby. So baby messages. Um, then it's real easy to kind of like look at it and go, well, that seems kind of like a feminine thing to do. Um, and um, so archangel is all about pregnancy, about people who are trying to have a baby, doesn't matter whether you're trying to have one through natural means or through um, adoption or some other methodology. Uh, Gabriel's the archangel that is has is of assistance about from that. But related to that, therefore, is creativity. So this whole sense of creativity. So it can be art or or music or whatever um, that is a creative outlet for you. Archangel Gabriel is also said to be the archangel of motivation. So helping us to, to like get really motivated to do things, to get out of our procrastination, to help us to find ourselves into this space of, wow, it's like I really can get things done. Um, and also communication. So finding the word, right words. I always uh, request for the, the assistance of Archangel Gabriel before I walk out on stage, before I do a podcast, before I do any kind of public speaking, because I ask Archangel Gabriel to give me the perfect words to speak so as to be crystal clear of my intent and help people to be able to understand what it is that I'm trying to convey. Next is Archangel Haniel, another feminine energy um, archangel. Her name means the grace of God. She comes in like a pale blue color, like moonlight, like the pale blue of the moon. Um, now, even more so than Gabriel, Haniel has this sort of like real solid feminine energy because she's related to feminine issues like um, the women's cycles, women's health. Um, the, you know, anything that is connected to the moon is Haniel's domain. Um, she is said to be the archangel that helps us to awaken to our spiritual gifts, our divine gifts, our psychic gifts, helps us to wake up to that and to be able to fully develop those things. Um, um, she, and because of that whole element too of of feminine cycles, she is looked at as being the archangel that helps us to release the old so that we can embrace the new. So um, trusting your spiritual gifts, that's a big uh, Archangel Haniel thing. Next is Archangel Jeremiah. And I've always loved it that they are alphabetically follow one another because I think of Haniel and Jeremiah as being almost like sibling archangels in energetic in an energetic way. Um, Jeremiah's name means the mercy of God, and he comes in this dark purple color. Now, one of the things that Jeremiah is known for is once again developing your spiritual gifts. So you can see that there's this relationship, this almost hand in hand kind of thing between Haniel and Jeremiah. And for me, both of them are uh, prematurely gray. They both have short hair. Um, they, they, there's an, a, there's a, a, 
a sibling resemblance to me. Um, and the way they interact is like siblings to me. Um, if, if there is a pair of archangels that are twins to me, it would be Hanion and Jeremiah. Um, again, this is just how they appear to me. That doesn't mean it's how they'll appear to you. And, um, and again, archangels have no genders. But Jeremiah, uh, the mercy of God, uh, besides being developing your spiritual gifts, he is conducting a life review for enlightenment of what's next. Now, that comes from the system where Jeremiah is said to be the archangel that meets us on the other side when our time here is done. So think of that as Azrael, the archangel who takes us to the other side after our life here is finished. Imagine that Azrael presents us to Jeremiah and says, I brought them to you and Jeremiah helps us to do a life review. Now, I've always loved it that Jeremiah's name means the mercy of God, uh, because to, in that life review, unlike certain religions might have try to convince us where it's like, oh, you will be judged harshly and you you can be found wanting and blah, 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 blah. Um, that's not really the way it is on the other side. Um, the other side is based on God, source, universe, goddess, spirit, the divine, and that is pure love. So there is no harsh judgment. There is merely a what did we learn and where are we going from here? And so to me, that is the mercy of God that we are not judged harshly the way we would be judged by other human beings. Um, so um, the thing that's great about Jeremiah is that you don't have to die <laughs> to get to do a life review with Jeremiah. You can be in this place in your life, or maybe you're having a midlife crisis or an existential crisis, or you're having something that's going on in your life, and you really need to like take a hard, hard look at what your life is like um, versus what you want your life to look like. And so where you've been, where you are now, and where you want to go. And Jeremiah can help us with that at any time. Next up, we uh, come to the, the last of the feminine energy um, archangels, and her name is Jophiel, and her name means the beauty of God. So um, whereas Ariel comes in a pale pink, Jophiel comes in a dark pink, like a fuchsia pink. Um, as the beauty of God, her one of the things that she does is that she helps us to uplift our thoughts to beautify the way we think about things, to stay out of our negative egos and to, to rise above our fear and worry and anxiety. Um, I like to joke that she is like rose-colored glasses um, from the archangel realm, but only in the best and positive ways. This whole element of, oh my goodness, I can see the world in a positive way regardless of the manner in which I may feel that I am experiencing life. Now, because she's the Archangel of Beauty, she's also said to be the Archangel of Feng Shui um, and the Archangel of clearing out clutter in our lives, uh, whether that is physical things or the clutter of negative thoughts, um, the clutter of negative people, uh, whatever it is that needs to be removed from our life. So um, this is a powerful and wonderful thing about Jophiel, I think, because as such, Jophiel has the ability to help us to get control of our thoughts in a really amazing and powerful way when we are feeling like we are spiraling downward. So next is an archangel named Metatron. Um, Metatron's name means we don't know what. We got. We don't really have much, um, um, so kind of doesn't have. There's no name attached to that. Um, his colors are violet and green in a swirl. Um, Metatron is um, a, a a really significant and important archangel in Judaism, um, less in Christianity, um, but has really been adopted and embraced by 
um, the spiritual new age movement. So Metatron is um, responsible for several things, sacred geometry. If that's something you're into, you're gonna wanna like hook up with Metatron. Um, he's said to be the archangel of grounding, the archangel of focus. Um, um, in particular, the archangel that protects highly sensitive people, especially youth, young people. Uh, if you've got a very sensitive young person in your life, Metatron's great for that, for protecting. Um, Metatron's a great archangel for manifesting. Um, and, and also archangel Metatron is known for time management and time warping. Um, so this is the this is probably the main thing that I work with Metatron for because as an author of so many products, I I currently have three products in the works right now simultaneously, um, three new decks, and all in different aspects of their process in the production line. Um, I and as a person who can procrastinate, just admitting it, um, I can find myself running short on time. Um, Metatron can warp time. So he can help you to like, when you've got only five minutes left, to use a metaphor, um, and but you're 10 minutes away from where you need to go, go you'll, Metatron can help you to hit every green light in your car or to help you to somehow warp time so that you suddenly, it's like, the time that felt like 30 minutes or felt like it was three hours turns out to have only been 30 minutes. So, or vice versa, if you need to speed up time, he can help you with that as well. So next up is probably the most well-known of all the archangels, Archangel Michael. His name means he who is like God. Um, for me, Archangel Michael comes in sapphire blue. Uh, other people might say royal blue or purple or um, maybe some gold flittered in. I do see Michael in his sapphire blueness um, showing up with a little bit of gold tint and things, and he uses gold for certain aspects. But Michael is the archangel and that is probably the most intensely masculine in appearance that most people see, although I will argue that he can show up in a feminine guise as well. If you've got my card deck, the Archangel Michael Sword of Light Oracle cards, you'll see Archangel Michael in both female, male, and non-binary genders in that card deck, black, white, Latinx, Latinx Asian, you name it, it's all in there. Um, <clears throat> but He's, he has a sort of light that you, he uses to sever our energetic connections to things that are not serving us, that are not good for us, that are making us not in a great place. Um, so he's protection, he's courage, he's safety, he's life purpose. So that's a big thing. Michael helps us with life purpose. And Michael is also said to help us to fix broken things. So you're sitting in your driveway. It's nine degrees outside. Your car won't start. <laughs> Little boys learn sound effects. What can I say? Um, and so you can say, dear Archangel Michael, please, please, please fix my car. I have to go to work. <laughs> so that's what Michael can, one of the things that Michael can do for us. Um, next up is Archangel Raguel, R-A-G-U-E-L, the friend of God, and he comes in a pale blue color. So Raguel is really amazing and an archangel that I highly recommend that you try to establish a relationship because he brings harmony to relationships that are in discord or harmony to situations where it's like, oh my gosh, my gosh, my gosh, this is going to go really badly, or you're really freaked out, or there's a lot of intenseness between people in the situation, Raguel can smooth that out. So where you have a, a challenging relationship with someone in your family or a friend or someone at work, he can help to smooth that out. He is 
known for healing arguments and misunderstandings. As the friend of God, Raguel can also help us to attract new friends into our lives. Um, so he's really great at that as well. Um, next up, another superstar in the Archangel realm is Archangel Raphael. And his name means God heals. Uh, he comes in an emerald green color. And Raphael is the archangel of physical healing, healing of the body. Some say also emotional healing. I think there's another archangel that does that more intensely. But Raphael can do both. Um, um, so physical healing. Um, uh, Raphael helps to heal people's physical bodies. He's a great archangel to help you to find the right physician, the right doctor, the right healthcare professional um, to help heal your bodies. It's really a great thing to do if you've got a physical ailment or a problem to allow Archangel Raphael to fill you up with emerald green light. Um, Raphael is also said to be the Archangel of travel and travelers. Um, so good Archangel to call upon if you are traveling. Um, but also he's a bit of a matchmaker. Archangel Raphael is the Archangel of, of matchmaking, of fixing people up, putting soulmates together or life partners together. Um, keep in mind he's green. The like the heart chakra is largely, not always, but largely thought of to be green in color. Uh, the other archangel that is said to be able to help us find relationships, romantic or otherwise, is um, Shamuel, who is in pale green. So I've always loved it that these two archangels are both green, and they're both said to have something to do with romance in our lives. Uh, side note, for those of you who have a little um, furry four-pawed four -pawed wonders in your life, um, Raphael is, I always invoke Raphael and Ariel together, um, because somewhere along the lines, I got taught that Raphael is great for helping find lost pets. So I always say Ariel and Raphael together when I'm talking about keeping my little babies uh, protected and safe at home. Next up is a really amazing archangel. His name is Raziel, R-A-Z-I-E-L. And Raziel comes in rainbow prism color. So all of these colors that you would look at that come out of a prism when the light hits it. Um, his name means the secrets of God. And Raziel is all about, therefore, understanding the secrets of the universe. He is said to sit at the throne of God and write down all the secrets that he hears when the divine or source or universe or goddess speaks and speaks those secrets. And he writes them down. And because of that, he's said to be the archangel that can help us to understand and learn esoteric information. Um, he's said to also be the archangel of remembering or healing past lives and also the archangel of dream interpretation. Um, I very much look forward to speaking with you very soon about Archangel Raziel um, and with a friend of mine who is coming on. Her name is Denise Lynn, and she and I are going to be talking about Raziel together. Um, so um, Raziel is really fascinating because he, just like the light that goes through the prism that breaks into all these different colors and sparks, Raziel, in my work with him, has said that he is actually broken apart in many, broken into many parts because he's the archangel of multiple realities, multiple universes. So that'll be a fun conversation. And Delise Lynn is amazing. I'm sure you've heard of her. She's wonderful. She's the real deal. Um, so that as an episode that is coming up really soon. Next up, we have Archangel Sandalphon, whose name is said to mean brother together. So he's said to be kind of like a brother energy to Metatron. Um, and there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about it later. Um, but uh, Sandalphon comes in this turquoise color. Now, much like 
Shamuel uh, that people look at and go, oh, he's the archangel of finding things. People look at uh, Sandalphon and go, oh, he's the archangel of music. But much like Shan, uh, Shamuel, where it's like, I think there's something deeper, aka personal and global peace. I think there's something much deeper and more, much more important about Sandalphon because Sandalphon is the archangel of receiving and delivering prayers. So receiving answers to prayers and delivering prayers to, directly to heaven. He is said to be so tall that his feet are on the on earth and his head is in the sky uh, in heaven. And he is therefore able to take our prayers and weave them into a beautiful wreath and lay them at the feet of the divine so that our prayers are received. And then to also make sure that the answers that come from the divine come back to us in a way in which we can interpret and understand and recognize. Well, I think that's amazing. Music is critically important to our people, to our earthly existence. To me personally, I have music constantly, except when I'm recording. Um, so I get that. But I also think that that whole prayer thing is something that's really important to human beings, especially at this particular time of confusion and misunderstanding um, and just plain flat freak out. Right, right. Next up uh, is another superstar in the Archangel realm, Archangel Uriel. Um, that's my personal favorite Archangel because I really met him first, and he's the Archangel that I work with the most, and so I'm very much en enchanted, and um, I very much love Uriel. His name means the light of God or the fire of God. Um, some people say he comes in yellow. For me, he comes in a sparkling, glittery gold color. Uh, whichever works for you, or even something else. Um, <clears throat> so Uriel is said to have the flame of God in one hand and a scroll of knowledge in the other hand. And so he is the archangel of ideas, of insights, of epiphanies, of intellectual understanding, of writing, um, of speaking, of teaching, and of emotional healing, and of transformation. So that's a lot. But let's just smooth it down into think of him as the archangel of epiphanies, brilliant ideas that lead to emotional healing that allows us to have a life transformation. Um, so um, that I, I love Uriel. I'm a writer. I'm a speaker. I'm a teacher. You know, it just makes sense that I would be all that connected. But I also am really infatuated with life transformation and helping people to be able to create that in their lives. So last but not least is Archangel Zadkiel, whose name means the righteousness of God. He comes in a deep indigo blue, or in which is you know almost purple, but uh, you know technically deep indigo blue, but almost purple. Um, I think of Zadkiel as the ginkgo biloba <laughs> of the archangel realm. And as such, he is the archangel of memory. Now, this is not the same thing as ideas like Uriel. This is memory. So he's the patron saint of students, of people taking tests. It can be a test in college. It can be a test like you're taking the certified public accountant. Um, he, but he's also the archangel of forgiveness. Um, so that's a big thing that he does. And remembering your own divine spiritual origin and mission. So that's a, like a fine line with Michael and life purpose. But this is a spiritually kind of thing. Life purpose is maybe an earthly um, assignment kind of thing. But there's definitely crossover. So if that's your thing that you're interested in working with Michael and Zed Kiel, who think about it are both in the blue hues. One, Michael is sapphire blue, Zed Kiel is deep indigo blue. So again, we've got that connection that I love, I love so much when things like that happen. Um, so he can help you with those things. So that is your quick summary of the 15 archangels that I work with. Over the coming weeks and months, we're going to be going through all these archangels in far greater context. I'll be having guests on to help me discuss those things. 
and um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I am so excited about this series, and I'm so glad that it's finally here because I've just been waiting for weeks for it finally, finally, finally to get here. Um, check out my new course that I'm teaching with my dear friend and marketing guru, Muni Syed, um, launching your personal tarot or spiritual business. We've got two different tracks for you, two different pathways. You can do one or you can do both, uh, but you can find out all about it by going to radleyvalentine.com forward slash launch, A-L-A-U-N-C-H, radleyvalentine.com forward slash launch, L-A-U-N-C-H. Thanks so much for tuning in for the Angel Tarot Show, uh, podcasting here at mindbodyspirit.fm. I hope you've enjoyed today. I can't wait to talk to you again next week.